Professor Felice Batlin, Associate Dean of Chicago Kent. Please rise for the national anthem. Leading us will be Josephine Falvo. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming on the rock's red glare the bombs bursting in was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the and welcome to the 2015 commencement of IIT Chicago Kent College of Law. Today I'm pleased to greet our 2015 graduating class as well as their family and friends and a special welcome to those watching our live stream in China. We celebrate this graduation as a community recognizing that without the love and support of family and friends, this wonderful milestone would not have been possible. Joining me on stage are Chicago Kent faculty, alumni, and friends, including our speaker, Jorge Ramirez, the president of the Chicago Federation of Labor and a 1997 graduate. Dean Krent apologizes for his absence today and sends his congratulations. At the heart of the university are its students and its faculty. And I have extraordinary faculty with me this afternoon. And I will just provide a couple of examples. Professor Malin directs our nationally renowned Institute for Law and the Workplace. Professor Stout has made Chicago Kent a leader in law and technology, including people's access to justice. Professor Lee's scholarship on intellectual property is cutting edge, and he has made us recognized internationally for our, our IP center. Professor Baker is a prolific scholar and has developed an innovative problem-solving class with Professor Johnson. And of course, Professor Stressman and Erickson have molded years of champion trial ad and moot court teams. Dean Soul is probably the most beloved man by all of us. <laughs> Professor Harding, Walters, and Ross Jackson deservedly received the Teacher of the Year Awards. And thank you to our many adjunct professors who labor out of love. We are a faculty truly dedicated to our students. And now for the students and what students you are. Congratulations to those of you on moot court and advocacy teams that have brought back shelves of glittering trophies. You have triumphed at multiple competitions 
and have spread our reputation for excellence far and wide. Congratulations to our many students who have shined in externships and volunteered countless hours for public interest initiatives. Our student bar association officers and the many student-run organizations at Chicago Kent have strengthened and bettered our community. And as I have observed fir firsthand, such students display absolutely extraordinary grace under pressure. Congratulations to those students who have served on Law Review and other journals. I want to especially acknowledge those students who are the first in their families to graduate from college or law school. What an accomplishment. And please applaud yourselves for this. Congratulations. This ceremony is, of course, the culmination of years of hard work. And I am repeatedly awed by our students. The obstacles that you have overcome, your maturity, your ambition, your energy, and creativity. All of our students have gained the skills necessary to effectively represent governments, individuals, businesses, and social causes. You will change people's lives, and you will do so with integrity. These last weeks, I've contemplated what graduation means. Why do we put on these strange robes? And why families come from hundreds and even thousands of miles away to participate? This ceremony, this commencement, is in fact a stunning moment to pause, to breathe, to be proud, to enjoy the fleeting transition from one phase of life into another rich in possibilities. It is a rite of passage that is seeped in history and witnessed by those you love and by the faculty and staff who have seen you grow into the role of attorney and advocate. <laughs> Our first speaker today represents the JD class of 2015, this year's valedictorian, David Repking. Oh, yes. <laughs> Originally from St. Louis, David graduated from Vanderbilt University with a degree in violin performance. He has performed with the New World Symphony in Miami Beach and the Kansas City Symphony. While at Chicago Kent, he was vice president of the Moot Court Honor Society and executive honor editor for the Law Review. He also earned the Best Respondents Brief Award with his teammate, John Chambers, at the Evan A. Evans um, Constitutional Moot Court Competition. He will be joining the law firm of Greenberg and Trowing. David. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am greatly honored to address the graduating 2015 class of the Chicago Kent College of Law. I would like to thank the administration, faculty, and alumni of Chicago Kent for their guidance and inspiration. I'd like to thank my parents, my incredible and loving wife, and the rest of her family for the overwhelming support during the last three years. And finally, on behalf of all of us, I would especially like to thank the family members of our class for their encouragement, advice, and probably most important, their emotional support in steering us from humble one Ls to the group of soon-to-be lawyers here today. I would like to share my experience in law school with all of you because I have a feeling that many of the graduates here had a similar one. In my mind, the toughest thing about law school, and especially that first year, is overcoming fear. Before I began my first year, I feared that I was making a bad decision and changing careers from a musician to a lawyer. I feared that I wouldn't be able to keep up academically after having been out of school for many years. I feared the incorrect stereotype of law school 
and that it is a cutthroat environment and that my classmates' only goal was to be the best. However, the biggest fear was throughout our 1L classes. It was the fear of the unknown. None of us really knew how we were doing in our classes, and there's nothing worse than not being able to check on your progress and to looking at your final grades when it is too late to change your study habits. An entire semester is a very long time not to know if you were learning the material correctly. But just a few days into my first semester, I realized that these fears were completely unfounded. My new classmates were kind, funny, and incredibly caring. We helped each other alleviate our fears by working together and talking about our classes. The cutthroat atmosphere that I envisioned before law school quickly transformed into a collaborative one. When one of us had a freak out moment or felt the stress coming down on us, we always had someone to lean on. I know that I would not have been able to successfully complete my degree without the support of my classmates. I sincerely believe that this camaraderie is what has made this class great. And we should strive to keep that collaborative mentality as we enter the workforce in both the private and public sectors. There is no problem too great that we as a group of intelligent and gifted people cannot overcome when we pool our talents together. I have been amazed throughout law school at the remarkable accomplishments that this class has achieved. Our moot court and trial teams have won more tournaments than I could possibly mention here today. Our class has donated an extraordinary amount of time and effort to public service organizations. From speaking at the White House, to working on new state legislation, to writing fantastic scholarly articles, the members of this class have gone above and beyond what is expected from typical law students. From here, we will be going in many different directions. Some of us will work for firms, some for judges, and some for public interest groups. Some of us will do something other than law. But whatever we do, remember what got us here. Don't just remember the hard work, late nights, and frustrating moments that we went through to graduate, but also remember the relationships we formed and the fun we had in going through the process. Keep in touch with your classmates. The people sitting next to you are the judges, managing partners, political leaders, and CEOs of the future. I have absolute confidence that this class will go on to do amazing things and become the lawyers and leaders that the world needs. Congratulations, class of 2015. You deserve it. Thank you, David. This year, our LLM class speaker is Patricia Mazor, a graduate in the US International and Transnational Law Program. Each year, Chicago Kent graduates almost 100 lawyers from around the world who come to Chicago for a year to gain the legal knowledge and skills necessary to thrive in a global legal economy. Patricia came to Chicago Kent from Gdansk, Poland, where she attended the University of Gdansk. There, she participated in the creation of the Intra-Agency Human Rights Society and was a member of the University Legal Clinic. She also defended her thesis on maritime insurance law. Before coming to Chicago, she interned at Hill Dixon in London. And after graduation, she will become an apprentice lawyer in Poland. Patricia. My fellow LLM and JD graduates, Dean Batlin, Saul, and Harris, professors, distinguished guests, parents, family, and friends, it is an honor to stand here in front of you today. Ever since I was asked to be this year's class LLM speaker, one thing has been stuck in my mind. Throughout the semester, one of our professors told us that she thinks what we did is incredibly brave. She thinks that packing up a suitcase and moving up to a different continent, to a city that we have never even been to before, is way scarier than any exam that we were ever, ever deal with, and she has never done anything like that in her life. Yep, it was scary. It also got me thinking that what started with me asking myself, what the hell was I thinking, turned out to be one of the most exciting and reaching and memorable experiences of my life. Studying at Chicago Kent College of Law gave us a whole new perspective on a lot of things. I think we can all agree that every single one of us foreign LM students struggled with studying not only in a different legal culture, but also in a different language. 
it didn't take us long to learn that we can get called on a class at any time, and it will most likely happen on the one day we did not reassignment as fully as we should have. We learned that analyzing cases is everything and that housing is cheaper than textbooks. But more importantly, we learned that with all of us LLMs coming from different culture and background, there is so much we could learn from one another and that, but that, that experience was highly appreciated. I am certain that this is one of the reasons why we can all agree that this, the benefits of this journey by far outweigh all of the struggles. Chicago Can provided us with high quality education taught by incredible scholars using a real life approach and lots of free food. We all have left our lives, families, and friends behind to pursue this dream. As cliche as it may sound, a random group of people that would have never otherwise met each other formed an LM family. A family that threw Thanksgiving, Christmas, or no occasion parties together. A family that comforted one another. A family that more importantly, inspired and constantly motivated one another. Even though our Chicago Can adventure is almost over, we are forever enhanced by each other's experiences, stories, and every moment that we have shared together. We all came here with certain expectations, and I'm sure we can all agree these simply pale in comparison to all of the unexpected we have experienced. We all came here because we wanted more, we wanted to reach a little bit higher, we wanted to be better. In addition to that, we have gotten so much more. On behalf of all LLM students, I want to thank everyone that made us believe it is perfectly fine to want more. I want to thank all of our parents who have been our biggest supporters throughout the years. I want to thank our siblings and friends for Skypes and phone calls in the middle of the night. Thank you Dean Krent and Dean Harris for welcoming us to your school and making us a part of a proud global alumni group. Thank you to all of the professors for sharing their experience and expertise with us. Thank you to all of our guests that decided to spend this special day with us. My fellow LLM students, we did it. Not only did we get through 830 exams with flying colors, but we also made it through the Chicago winter. No matter what is waiting for us now, wherever we end up, I am sure we will make each other proud. Wherever, there is nothing that can stop us now. Congratulations to us all. Thank you to this year's student speakers. At this time, I'd like to recognize a few members of the graduating class for their accomplishments and contributions. The Bar and Gravel Awards honor those who have provided outstanding service to the college, the community, and the legal profession. Please stand when I call your name and hold any applause to the end. Iman Baudawi. Casey Brown, Hannah Kaufman, <laughs> Laurel Martinez, Megan McDonald, Odell Mitchell III, Dana Powell, Jacob Radeke, Emily Schrouder, Kyle Swanson, Rebecca Sundin, Kurt Wakefield. Congratulations on your achievements. You may be seated. 14 guests on stage with us today are the alumni or members of the Chicago Kent and IIT community. And they have this special opportunity to hood their children, spouses, and other relatives and welcome them to the alumni ranks. Ross Allen will be hooded by his mother, Sarah Allen, 77. John H. Bickley IV by his father, John Bickley III, 78. David Brody by his sisters, Jacqueline Cantor and Ashley Brody. John Chambers by his uncle, the Honorable Timothy J. Chambers, class of 80. Ann Cooper, by her father, Scott Cooper, 78. Justin DeAngelis, by his mother, Judy DeAngelis, 87. Caitlin Donahue, by her father, Craig Donahue, 89. Justin C. Greer, 
by his sister-in-law, Stephanie Palciano, 2000. Corey Levin by his father, Barry S. Levin, 77. Matthew McCarter by his father, James McCarter, 76. Kara Ryan by her father, Joseph Ryan, 86. Ian Schaefer by his uncle, Larry Cohn, 71. Christian Salter by her father, Robert Salter, 78. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I now present the 2015 graduating class of Chicago Kent College of Law, starting with the candidates for the Masters of Laws and Juris Doctors degrees. I call upon Assistant Dean Stephen Sull to introduce the individual graduates. Thank you, Dean Sull. Thank you, Dean Batlin, and greetings to our graduates and guests. On pages 10 and 11 of today's program, you will note that certain 2015 Juris Doctor candidates have earned a certificate in one of the following programs. Business law, criminal litigation, environmental and energy law, intellectual property law, international and comparative law, labor and employment law, litigation and alternative dispute resolution, public interest law, or the Praxis program. Only the names of those graduates who are present today will be read. Please hold your applause until all candidates have received their degrees. First, I have the honor of presenting the 2015 recipient of the Doctor of Juridical Science degree and the first recipient of this degree at Chicago Kent. Will the candidate for the JSD please rise? Rui Tan. I now have the honor of presenting the 2015 recipients of the Master of Laws degree in Financial Services Law, U.S. International and Transnational Law, International Intellectual Property Law, Taxation, and Trial Advocacy for International Students. Will the candidates please rise? Receiving the degree of Master of Laws in Financial Services Law. Bu Fan Fu. Jue Sao. Anna D. Kennewitz. G. Lei. Sarah McTooth. Bianca Maria V. Marin. G. 
Tian Na. Tianyu Siya. Mengfei Zhan. Receiving the degree of Master of Laws in U.S. International and Transnational Law. Narek Arushanyan. <laughs> Lai Wei Bao. Julia K. Barg. Carlos A. Casio Empudia. Tatiana M. Juban. Yu Fu. Marine Jandilian, Haiyan Hu, Wendy Hu, Here's a Ms. Law K. Karen. Muli Li. Chengji Lian. Jiang Lin, John Lu, Yu Chen Lu, <laughs> Yu Ma. Yuyan Ma, Patricia A. Majur, <laughs> Nino Mandiashvili, Andre Maskulik. Cyrilek Nakalasan. <laughs> Paloma Pascal Peaks. Boning Chu. Enrique Javier. Ruiz Cordero. Tian <laughs> Shi. Milos Skaransky. Eline Sultanishvili. Lianhui Sun, Jendrik Shimjik, 
Sofio Tabataza. Caroline Tirio. Juliana Vaitik. Juang Wan. Yuan Wang. Yanmin Wang. Minting Xia. Baishuang Yang. Bei Yang. Jia Yu. Wenting Yu. <laughs> Joel Zangiro. <laughs> Jining Zeng. Shailin. Zhang, I'm sorry, Zhang Yu. Lei Zhu. Receiving the degree of Master of Laws in International Intellectual Property. Zilamila Anywhere. Ji Chen. Tian She Juan. Huang Kan Sorthip. Eliana A. Torres. <laughs> Zhu Zheng Wang. Boe Chow, Yi Chang, <laughs> Xiao Chen Chu. Receiving the degree of Master of Laws in Taxation. Jose M. Ortega. Receiving the degree of Master of Laws in Trial Advocacy for International Students. Chen Deng.
Ayang Liu, Jing Lu, Emma E. Tal, Rong Jung. That concludes the presentation of the candidates for the Master of Laws degree. I now have the honor of presenting the 2015 recipients of the Juris Doctor degree. For those fall graduates who have taken and passed the bar exam, I will append Esquire when calling their names. And again, please hold your applause until the names of all candidates have been read. Sarah E. Agard, Esquire. Johnny Acosta. Michael H. Adler. Virginia Adamavichus. Rosade Akbari. Grace O. Akinlemibola. Michael Albert. Daniel G. Allard. Ross Edward Allen. Eric Hendricks Anderson Esquire. Michael R. Anderson. Amani Awad. James Babulis. Daniel J. Bacchus. Emiliano Bidenbaum, Esquire. Kaylee E. Beish. Smayo Bairovich. Teresa J. Baker. <laughs> Henderson Michael Banks, Esquire. Ian C. Barnes, Sarah M. Barnes, Bridget K. Barr, Esquire. 
Nicholas Bartson. Caleb M. Beckett. Alexandra Bekov. Lindsay K. Berg. Stephen John Bartholomew. Crystal Adele Bickford. John H. Bickley IV, Esquire. Maureen G. Betonio. <laughs> Lyndon E. Bluth. Sergey A. Bogomolov. Eugene Bolotnikov. <laughs> Devin Boss. Simonita Boscovic Esquire. Iman Nasir Bandawi. Peter Briarton Esquire, David A. Brody, Casey N. Brown, Elizabeth Lauren Butler. Anna Christina Carrera. John Matthew Carter. Caitlin M. Casey. John Chambers. Maggie Chapo Esquire. Salitha C. Chapman. Vincenzo Chimera. Anna P. Cochran. Heather N. Colinette. <laughs> Molly L. Condon. Sean Connor. Ann A. Cooper. Claudia L. Cortez. Tyler M. Cox.
Dana B. Cronkite. Brendan J. Crowley. Lucas H. Dahlin. Shore P. Davuti. Justin D. DeAngelis. Matthew R. Dimmers. Ryan J. Duvall. Susan Dewey. Jonathan Ian Dibel. Pamela Demo. Jessica Dodd. Caitlin S. Donahue. Kevin Doran, Rositsa S. Drakteva, Ellie Drake, Samantha A. Dodzinski, Jessica A. Duhigg. Tarek Imara. Elsa O. Erickson. Brooks Fleming. Ian M. Fleming. Tyler C. Forney. Lyle Fox III. Paige Fox. Nicole Fandora. Melody L. Gall. Sarah Gabala. James M. Garceau. Christina Garcia. Thomas C. Gerritsen. Cole Garrett. Doug L. Germano. Paul T. Geske. Jarrett S. Glazer. Michael R. Graham. Justin Cooper Greer.
Jenna D. Gust. Chesel N. Habib. Eric J. Alverson. Ryan P. Hannikin. Robert A. Harrison. Khalid J. Hassan. Eric K. Pillal. Laura J. Henneman. Lauren D. Henry. Emily Ann Herbick. Matthew A. Hoyce. Jenna Holtz. An S. Hussein. Ryan M. Hines. Bobby L. Irvin. Suzanne E. Jack you. Christina A. Jacobson. Meredith C. James. Elsa G. Jaramillo. John Jefferson. Tabitha J. John. Ian M. Jones. Sean K. Camps. Adi Canlick. Brett N. Kaplan. Hannah Kaufman. Maron T. Kabede. Seth B. Kennedy. Benit Kosla. Sujin Kim. Mark J. Kimsey. Daniel C. Kirby. Adrian N. Kitchen.
Anna Kobrazak. Blake S. Koshin. Ashley Koda. Taylor J. Cole. Kelly K. Koss. Jacqueline Kostich. Paige M. Krauss Esquire, Jeffrey Quo, Joseph F. Kajetkowski, Joshua D. Laker, Jane S. Lee. Kendra L. Lee. Corey Jonathan Levin. Seth J. Levin. Christopher S. Levis. Emmanuel S. Yamath. Kimberly D. Lowen. Amy L. Liu. Lina Lopez Caballero Ferrar Esquire. Ilongi Lozada. Zachary J. Lysot. Abdon Madrigal. Yeah. Hannah Maki Jokela. Yeah. Alicia K. Malik, Esquire. Yeah. Randall Manoyan. Katie E. Marnell. <laughs> Carla Marroquin. <laughs> Laurel A. Martinez. Melanie J. Matias. Matthew McCarter. Terry N. McClurklin Small. <laughs> Megan McDonald. <laughs> Lauren R. McGee.
Daniel J. McGinnis. Eric J. Melly. Christopher M. Miller. Patrick R. Minor. Mark B. Minovich. Madeline J. Minton. Sarah Maruzzi. Odell Mitchell III. Chad B. Mizell. Dylan R. Mombach, Esquire. Lauren E. Monahan. Shamama T. Moosefi. <laughs> Ashley N. Morin. <laughs> Ashley N. Moscarello. <laughs> Matthew Mulrow. Stephanie J. Nelson. Michael D. Newman. Lindsay Orlando Esquire. Adam A. Orr. Alex Ottenheimer. Caitlin E. Perella. Maxwell L. Perry. Michael G. Partipillo. Jinal Patel. <laughs> Pratik R. P. Reddy. Lauren A. Pena. Lucas R. Peters. Dana Pownell. Mariella C. Prito. McKenna M. Prohoff. Yan Ling Hui. Rory P. Quinn. <laughs> Jacob Radecki. <laughs> Saranya Raghavan. Alexis M. Ramirez. Suhe Ramirez Esquire.
Daniel A. Raymer. Joshua A. Rehack. Adam J. Reese. David S. Repking. Denise Reyes. Jared M. Reynolds. Lisa Rocanova. Claire M. Roche. Carla V. Rodriguez. Alexander F. Rojas. Benjamin P. Rossborough. Matthew J. Ruza. Kara N. Ryan. Emma Una. Sedakovic, David B. Savitt, Allison R. Schaefer, Lorian E. Shanestead. Megan C. Schulten. Emily R. Schrader. Kristen R. Schuler. Michael E. Schultz, Esquire. <laughs> Brittany L. Schuyler. Reed W. Seagren. Courtney L. Sager. Joaquin Sena. Ian A. Schaefer. Anish R. Shah. Judy B. Shamo. Bridget K. Shanley. Eric J. Schinnebarger. Andrew. Michael H. Sinise. Kyle S. Scala. Gabriella Sneeringer. Kristen Salter. 
Michael R. Spanell. Robert A. Stern. Samuel Todd Stevens. Catherine Morgan Stroll. Rebecca A. Sundin. Eric A. Swanson. Kyle J. Swanson. Lauren S. Tahiri. Alex Tillett Sachs. Alexis M. Tomczewski. Hannah D. Tuber. Sarah M. Tunney. Jerome Urbic. Kristen M. Van Acker. Bridget A. Van Tile. Mark R. Villalobos. Kurt Vincent Wakefield. Karis D. Walker. Arlo B. Walsman. Max C. Whittington. Nicole Wilmette. Richard Wilson. Megan J. Wood. Natalie Sakrazeka. Esquire. Michael Jang. Jin Zhang. Jang Lin.
all degree candidates please rise. By the virtue of authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Illinois Institute of Technology, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws or Juris Doctorate and admit you to all its rights, privileges, and obligations. Please join me in once again congratulating the Class of 2015. to introduce our concluding speaker for today's ceremony, Jorge Ramirez, a 1997 graduate of Chicago Kent. Mr. Ramirez is the son of Mexican immigrants who grew up in Chicago's back of the yards neighborhood before going to college at the University of Texas, El Paso. He was elected the first Latino president of the Chicago Federation of Labor in 2010, and this February he was elected to the AFL-CIO Executive Council as Vice President, helping to guide the daily work of the National Federation. As President of the CFL, Mr. Ramirez works to represent the interests of labor and to protect the fundamental rights of all workers. In 2013, we honored him as one of Chicago's Kent 125 alumni of distinction. Please join me in welcoming Jorge Ramirez. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations to all of you. I'm honored to be here with you today on this day of your graduation. First, I'd like to thank Dean Harold Krent for inviting me to come and address you all this afternoon. I'd also like to thank Associate Dean Felice Batlin for the gracious introduction. Chicago Kent's faculty and staff, honored guests, and those of you who are graduating today, or just finished actually. When Chicago Kent came calling, I was very excited for this opportunity. It reminded me though of a story that our senior senator from Illinois, Senator Dick Durbin, tells. I first heard it about two years ago. I was very careful to ask my wife how she felt about me addressing you today. You see, Senator Durbin asked his wife, Loretta, if she could ever imagine in her wildest dreams that he would speak in front of a group like this today, and she said no, to his surprise. And he said, how is that? She said, well, you're not in my wildest dreams. <laughs> so I asked my wife very carefully what she thought about me being here this morning. And in only a way that she could put it, she said, I'm very excited for you because I know what this means. She said that my commitment to faith and my family has always grounded me and has always kept me focused on what I do, fighting for people instead of fighting against them or selling them out. I love her for saying that to me this morning. And I thought I might share it with you and that it would be worthwhile. But enough about me for now. What about you? Diploma in hand. What are you going to be doing 15, 10, 25 years from now? Do you see yourself delivering a commencement address? I know when I was sitting in your seat, I didn't. Not in my wildest dreams. What's your story going to be? Let me tell you a little bit about mine. I can remember my commencement ceremony 18 years ago when I received my law degree, like many of you. To say it was a proud moment for me and my family was an understatement. See, I'm the son of Mexican immigrants. My father, Ruben, came from Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico. At the age of 17, he didn't speak English. He went to work in the meatpacking houses, Chicago's back of the yards neighborhood, around 1956. 
At that time, Mexicans were looked down upon. So my father wasn't allowed to use a knife or perform any skilled tasks in the industry that he chose to work in. He had the lowest menial jobs in the plant, like carrying dead carcasses and heavy boxes and barrels of meat. And after a few years, he got a job at another meatpacking house where he worked in sanitation and was eventually promoted to a butcher after much hard work. Throughout his time at the packing houses, he saw friends suffer severe injuries on the job. He himself lost the middle finger and his right hand while on the job. And before his employer would help him look for it, he had him sign a waiver that he wouldn't sue him. So my father knew that this isn't how workers were meant to be treated. So he became active in a union to combat this. He started organizing in his workplace. He and his fellow workers struggled to unionize their workplace all through the 60s and 70s. But by standing together, they secured a union contract that offered better wages and benefits with hopes for a better life. As a kid, I witnessed firsthand the strength and collective voice gave to these workers. My brothers and sisters and I, from time to time, would sit with my father on picket lines, watching and learning. In the end, I watched my father create better opportunities for the workers in his local union and for his own family at home. Watching him as I grew up made me the person I am today. So much so that I went to law school after witnessing some legal advice gone awry. One day, while I was at college, I was home from vacation and I went to go visit my father at the local union where he was in the middle of negotiations for a contract for a group of workers in the packing industry. And his attorney convinced him that day that the deal that was being presented to him and the workers was a good deal. But I can remember something in my gut telling me it didn't sound right. It was the lawyer's best legal advice he could give, but in my opinion, ignorant as it was, didn't feel like good legal advice. And it wasn't. My dad spent years fixing it, and he eventually did. I realized that if I'm going to do this kind of work, representing workers, I needed to understand how lawyers thought and how they operated. I have to know what they're doing, what makes them tick, so if need be, I could pick it apart. The next thing I know, 1997, when I was sitting in your seat, I remember thinking, now that I had this degree, I had no clue where it was going to lead me. The interesting thing is, since earning my law degree, at every pivotal point in my career, I found myself drawing on my law school experiences. Whether it was something I read, something I was trained to do by a professor, or something I experienced while here, the skills I developed at law school helped me at all my pivotal moments. You may not realize it now, and it may not have happened yet, but trust me, it will. And it might even end up being something from your evidence class or your commercial paper class or who knows what class. The folks sitting behind me may cringe, but I need to say this to you anyway. You don't have to remember the details of every lesson you learned in law school. Just know that these last three years have prepared you for the next three decades and beyond. Since graduating, I went to become an executive director of the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1546 here in Chicago. And then, through a churn of opportunities, I was able to become the first Latino elected to the Chicago Federation of Labor in its 120 years of existence. I represent the... I don't get a chance to do this very often, but and I know he's not going to like me for saying it, but I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Marty Malin, who's sitting up here two seats away from me. For the work that he does with labor law, law in the workplace, as many of you know, many of you probably had him for class. I drop his name all the time in my professional life, and it works great as well. So <laughs> thank you, Professor Malin. It's gotten me some mileage. Um, <laughs> So I represent the interests of labor through my work on various advisory boards or labor, civic, and community organizations across the city, the state, and our country. But this is my story. 
I channeled my energy into helping workers and saving jobs. That's what I chose to do with my degree. There are other stories out there that are better than mine. I know it. But what is your story going to be? How will your background combined with your education help make you who you're meant to be? Spend time thinking about it. Be proud of what you've accomplished. Take stock. Apologize to your loved ones for ignoring them these past three years. You know what I mean. I wanted to make the, a difference in my local union, and I knew that going to law school could help me in my life. It wasn't until I saw my dad work that I realized how important it was to have that legal background. I know my dad wished that he had had it. See, the thing about it is, people will need you now. They will need your help and expertise that you've acquired here over the last three years. People are going to look up to you just because you've accomplished so much. They're going to look to you for answers to save them and to help them at times. There's a tremendous responsibility that comes along with this degree whether you practice law or not. Keep in mind that words matter, syntax matters. Not just legal drafting documents, but in life. It's going to matter in every way, even ways that you don't expect. Let me give you one little example from my life. I have four children, four boys, 11, 9, 7, and 4. Looking for babysitters, if you're willing. But <laughs> when my wife was pregnant with our last child, she had this belly starting to show, right? Like pregnant women do. And she told me it's time to tell the other boys that they've got to stop jumping all over mom because there's a baby in her belly. So we gathered all the boys around and said, hey, the bump in mommy's belly is there's a baby in there. And they started jumping around because they were very happy that they were having a new brother or sister. And while they were having so much fun thinking about it, my nine-year-old came up to me and put his hands on my stomach and said, Dad, what are you having? <laughs> so the point of all this is you have to be able to explain things so that anyone, even a nine-year-old boy, can clearly understand. Right? Needless to say, that's when I realized I also had to lose a bit of weight. That's also when I learned the lessons taught to me, and she's not here today, but Mary Rose Struby. That it really matters how you describe situations or problems and what it means. Thanks to my boys, I'm reminded of that every day. Throughout life, you'll find that words really do matter. Some people will use words to praise you. Some will use words as weapons. We all know Chicago Kent has the most intensive legal writing program in the country, right? Because you're going to be grateful for all the legal writing you did here at Chicago Kent. That's the advantage that you're going to have over everyone else out there who graduated from every other school. It's not to knock them down a peg, but I know from working with folks that graduated from other schools, it is the best legal writing program in the country. It's words are now the tools of your trade. Lawyers take the most complex legal theories and boil them down so the average person can understand them clearly. That's the gift. It matters in a courtroom, in a boardroom, or in my case, even at home. But it's not just words that matter. Who you are matters too. You need to represent your client's interests without losing yourself. As a lawyer, you're always representing your clients, but you're also representing yourself in that context. What are you about? You need to figure that out. Don't let the world compromise you. You don't have to compromise yourself as much as you think you may. Take lessons from some of the greats, like Abraham Lincoln, who was good at simplifying cases and, and just a few key words, a few key points. Or Thurgood Marshall, he knew who he was and what he stood for. Clarence Darrow, whose conscience of character led him from being the corporate attorney to defending the poor, the hopeless, and the most needy. And now it's time for you to take a bite of that same apple. You'll need to figure out how to make this work our society and our country even. Because I'm sorry to tell you, those who came before you have left it in a bit of shambles. You need to pick it up and make your towns, your communities, and your states a better place to live. Our society has moved away from the ideal of working toward a common good to a more individualistic approach, which is at its core the questions of what's in it for me? What are you going to do for me? We need to figure out a way to get back to the common good let me put it into some perspective for you. In the 1950s, the United States was number one in gross domestic product per capita. Today, we're number 13. 
In 1950s, we were number one for standard of living against all other industrialized nations. We're 12, knocking on the door of 13. The middle class was at its largest. Today, it's the smallest it's been in generations, and the gap between the wealthy and poor is the largest that it's ever been. CEO average worker pay to average hourly worker ratio was 30 to 1 back then. It's 350 to 1 now. And about 13 million Americans had manufacturing jobs. Today, less than 12 million manufacturing jobs, even though our population has more than doubled. And lastly, in the 1950s, corporate taxes accounted for about 30% of all federal revenue. Today, 7%. That's the reality. That's what's waiting for you outside those doors. You have to make the world a better place. And that's what you're up against. I know this is a little heavy for today, and I'm not looking to bring you down. I want you to rest easy knowing that you're probably the one profession that can do the most about all of it. The degree that you hold will allow you to do the most about all of this, whether you decide to go into politics, business, labor, philanthropy, or whatever. You'll be equipped to make a difference, to put a dent in this battle. So wherever the winds take you, understand that you now have what you need to make a difference. So do it. Think back to when you wrote your letter of admission to the admission boards of this school and every other school you may have applied to. All of you wrote in some form or another that you want to make the world a better place. I'm sure of it. That you want to help people. That I'm also sure of. And let's be honest. Statistically, 25% of you probably didn't really mean it like that, right? <laughs> but the thing of it is, you now need to make a difference. And with this degree, you actually can. Whether you decide to practice or not, you're prepared. I told you my story, now it's time for you to go and make yours. Thank you, congratulations. Before we conclude, I want to thank Julie Shin, Katie Ahn, and the staff and student volunteers for their hard work in facilitating this graduation. Would our, would our new graduates now please stand, turn around, face your family and friends, to let them know how much you have appreciated their support over the past years. Okay, so that concludes the 2015 Chicago Ken College of Law commencement. Please remain seated until the faculty leaves and join us for a champagne toast in the tent. Thank you for being here. Thank you, graduates. Thank you, faculty. <laughs>